In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Chaser 88 with your controller and in Betaflight so that you can get in the air without any problems. Now, if you haven't seen the video up here, check that out. That's my review of this fantastic little quad. And since that video, I've done a couple things to it to make it even better. I've swapped out the FPV camera with a TX-03 and that can transmit at 25, 50, or 200 milliwatts. So no more static. And I put some shrink wrap tubing around the receiver antenna to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. With those two easy modifications, this is my favorite flyer right now. For all of my brushed quads, I've been using this tiny 8-channel S-Bus FR Sky receiver and it's worked great. But the range was not amazing. It was good enough for flying around for a brushed quad, but I knew with a brushless and these being so much more powerful and able to cover ground, I wanted a receiver that had more range. So I picked this up from Banggood and this is actually quite a bit smaller. It's crazy how small this new one is. So I've got a lot better range out of a smaller receiver. So that's fantastic. Now I've gone ahead and disassembled the Chaser 88 just a little bit and I've freed up that wiring harness and I've cut off the connector and I've soldered those ends into uh, the receiver. Now all I've got to do is kind of fold everything back in and get it back together. So what I'm suggesting that I found works best is just kind of packing this neatly right back underneath the flight controller. And it's a really tight fit, but if you get everything lined up and all the wires kind of in the right spot, you can get everything stacked back in. And then once you put that all back together, you're just gonna run your wire on this um, aluminum roll cage deal and uh, tie it to that so that it doesn't get chopped in the propellers. All right, so we've got the Chaser 88 ready to get plugged in to see what Betaflight settings are already set up on it. Let's go ahead and get the USB plugged in. And then we will connect. All right, everything seems to be working properly. Take a quick look. It looks like the um, wires that we used to go to the receiver are wired into UART3 in the serial, so that looks good. We'll go to the configuration. Um, it's using DSHOT 600. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, motor stop is on, so if we arm it, the motors will not automatically start spinning. That's good for right now. Um, it's interesting that the uh, flight control board has been rotated 90 degrees, so that's something I didn't notice earlier when I was looking at it. Um, so it's set up to use iBus, and the receiver that I have is set up to use SBus. So I'm going to go ahead and just change that to SBus now, knowing that that's different. Um, we're going to keep scrolling down. VBAT's turned on. That looks good. 8 and 2 accelerometer. Um, LED strip. I'm excited. I've never used one of those before. Uh, servo tilt is turned on for some reason. I'm going to turn that off. There's no servo. There's nothing... Uh, that uses servo tilt. So I'll go ahead and save that and reboot. So now I'll take a look at the PID tuning. Um, these look okay. Uh, I think this is the stock rates. Um, I would expect proportional to be a little bit higher, uh, but we'll leave that alone for now. I haven't even flown it, so let's see how it acts uh, with the stock PIDs. Now we're going to go over to the receiver. So I'm not getting any type of transmission working. Um, okay, so the green light is not on, so that means I probably have to plug in the battery to power the receiver, so I'll go ahead and do that. And okay, there we go. I'm starting to see some. Now, I need to make sure the channel map goes to the JR Spectrum Groppner TAER format, and then this stops spinning. Okay, so let's see here, that all works. Okay, uh, looks like you can arm this by just using y'all. Okay, so I don't like that. I want to use a switch. Um, we'll definitely take a look at that in the next. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then we'll go into modes. Okay, it looks like they don't have a switch dedicated to arming. Um, I want to go ahead and set this up on my, my normal uh, one switch. And then I'll do flight modes on switch two. And then I'll probably do the beeper um, on like the switch over here, switch three or something. But it's interesting, they've got it set up so that the second you arm it, it goes into acro mode, and then 
you go into angle mode and then acro mode with uh, air mode layered on top. Uh, that's not the way I like it, so I'm going to go ahead and switch this up a little bit. Um, so in the uh, controller that I have, I'm going to say arm is aux 1, we'll do air mode is 2, I just don't even use angle mode. I'll do horizon, and I'll do horizon, it'll start off. Um, then we'll go to acro with air mode layered on top, and then we'll go into just acro, and then beeper will be on aux 3. That's the way I want to set it up. So I need to set up my switches on my trainers first before I save them into the flight controller. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the menu. I'm gonna page over to my mixer. And then just real quick, I'm gonna say, this is my first auxiliary. I'm gonna say that as SA. I'm gonna exit out, I'm not gonna label it. So that's gonna be my arm switch. And then I'm gonna do my flight mode switch, SB. And then I'm going to add a third auxiliary channel, and that will be the beeper. Oops. And that will be the beeper. Okay. All right. So now we've got all three auxiliary switches set up on this. Now let's go back to over to Betaflight, and then I'm going to say that I want to arm off auxiliary one. And then my flight modes are off auxiliary two and my beeper is off auxiliary three. That should all work now. Let's take a look. Let's put my hand on this and click save. Okay, that looks like it's that's look like it that looks like it took. So let's go ahead and arm it. Alright. So that's working. The beeper. That works well. And now I'm in horizon mode. Now I'm in air mode with, or acro with air mode, and now it's just pure acro. Okay, so that's all how I wanted it. So with the receiver, I want the mins and maxes to be from 1,000 to 2,000, and the middles to be at 1,500. So this is something that is um, not essential. You can still fly, but it definitely uh, optimizes the way um, you're using your, your width of control signal. So we're going to go... Uh, page over to outputs. Channel one is throttle. All right, so tr throttle at the min, I can see is at 1007. And then at, if I put it to where it looks like it's the middle on the stick, it's at 1528. So I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna select channel one. I'm gonna go over to the PPM center. I'm gonna bring that down to 1500. And I'm looking at uh, the beta flight screen and waiting until that to get down to 1500. Okay, then I go back to the min, I go min, and then I raise that to a thousand. All right, let's get this at a thousand, very good. And because we're using D-Shot, this is kind of important to make sure we get the most out of everything. Uh, 1999, so let's go here, and we'll raise that up. All right, so that goes from a thousand, very good, to two thousand, and the middle is fifteen hundred. Perfect. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something today. The Chaser 88 has been a blast to fly. Now, in my previous video where I reviewed it, all the video footage was really staticky, but I just put in this new FPV camera, and that's taking care of all those issues. So sit tight and enjoy some staticless video footage. I will see you next time.